Hi everyone, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. It's my top 10 recommendations to get through your video game backlog. I didn't feel confident in making this video until I made significant progress in my own backlog and I made some headway this year, I must say, and I'll explain how. But if you don't know me, my name's Asasina san Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And if you've been here, thank you so much for coming back. So I currently only have three physical games left in my backlog. That means games that I paid for that are physical and not digital. And I have about four digital games that I paid for that I want to get through. I am not counting games that are available on Game Pass. I'm not counting games that I got through PlayStation Plus because then, well, it's a little too many. <laughs> and I guess my first piece of advice is to only consider the games that you purchase as part of your backlog. Because if you think of other games as part of your backlog that are included in subscription services or that you got through PS Plus, then you're gonna get really overwhelmed. So remember, the list that you have are only games that you paid for, games that you own. Okay, start there and then create a list. So I have a list, one for games that I own that I want to get through my proper backlog. And then I have a list for games that came out already, but that I don't own. Either I have them through PS Plus or they're available on subscription service, which might be a limited time anyway, so I don't even bother counting it until I actually plan to play it. Or they're a game that I just never bought, but that I really, really want to play. So that's my second list, and I wouldn't even call that a backlog. I'm just going to call that a list of games that I'm interested in. And sometimes I revisit that list and I wind up taking things off and making it shorter. And then my third list is games that are actually coming out that I want to play. And most of the time, I play most of the games that come out in a year and I beat them. So in a nutshell, number one, create lists and only count the games that you own that you paid for as part of your backlog. It'll make things way less overwhelming. Number two might piss people off, but I have to say it anyway because it's true. Don't play games that are games of service, meaning don't play battle royale games, don't play ongoing multiplayer games, don't play MMOs. And if you're the type of person that plays those kinds of games, especially if you play more than one, then just don't even have a backlog. And if you do, only hold yourself accountable for like one or two games that you really, really wanna play per year. And once you get through those two games, then add another two games because if you're playing an ongoing game, chances are you're never gonna get through your backlog if you have one that's extensive. When I was playing Overwatch and Destiny, I loved those games and I don't regret my time with it, but I did feel like I missed out on a lot of amazing single player experiences. And so now I really limit my time with ongoing games. So in a nutshell, don't play ongoing games, don't play games of service games, stay away from them. But if you can't, only play one at a time if you really want to. And if you can't do one at a time, just don't even bother with a backlog. And if you have to bother with a backlog, only hold yourself accountable for up to two games per year and that's it. Or else you're setting unrealistic expectations for yourself because you're on the grind, okay? <laughs> know what kind of gamer you are. Number three is don't play more than three games at a time. And I know that's pretty difficult, especially if you need to play multiple games to stay entertained. Like some people playing one game over and over again makes them bored, so then they move on to something else. And that's pretty much how people don't beat games. But if you focus on at least three games and beat all three of those games, then you're more likely to move on to the next three games and feel like you don't have a backlog because you didn't finish a game and you want to go back to it later or something. A lot of people fall into this camp, so don't feel weird if you do. It's more common than you think. It's very rare that people beat games. It's so rare. But basically, you just don't want to have all these unfinished games that contribute to your backlog growing and growing. So only three games at a time, okay? Number three, only three. <laughs> all right, number four is going to sound cuckoo bananas because I'm a trophy hunter and and people are gonna be like, wait, what? You're telling me not to do something that you do? Okay, the truth is, just cut down on platinuming and 100% in games and just focus on experiencing the main story and then move on from the game, especially for games that you don't absolutely adore. Like lately, I have been platinuming only games that I absolutely love or games that I kind of enjoy the platinum list. Like some games have really fun lists, even if it's a game that I don't love because they have like miscellaneous things like South Park Stick of Truth, like farting on a bunch of people or something. Those are fun lists. So I might go for a platinum because it's a fun list, even if I don't necessarily like the game. South Park is great, by the way. But yeah, if you don't like a game, don't just platinum it to platinum it. Because then, yo, you're gonna be playing that game for a while and not experiencing games that you might actually love. And honestly, the older you get, the less worth it it is. I used to platinum like every single game that I touched. And then at some point I was like, 
bitch, you do not have time for this shit. And it's meaningless. It really is. Like, you're not gonna get more bitches for Platinum in Games. You're not gonna succeed in a career for Platinum in Games unless that's your job, like creating guides or something, I don't know. And most of the time it just puts people in a bad mood because a lot of these games put you in like an unnecessary grind. Now, if it makes you happy, yo, live your life. Live your life. If you got the time to do that shit, go ahead. But if you feel like it's taking away from like working out or spending time with people you care about or, you know, working or, you know, building your career or whatever the fuck, just don't do it and play the game, enjoy the game, don't feel like you need to 100% or platinum it. I said it, I said it. <laughs> and this is especially true for games that have redundant, grindy roadmaps, like games that make you do the same shit over and over again, and it's really not testing your skills, it's really not adding anything to the game, because sometimes platinuming games does add to the game, and you get to experience the game more than someone who didn't platinum the game, but if it's just mundane bullshit, just let it go. Just don't even bother, move on to the next game. There's so many other games that are more more worth platinuming than that shit, okay? Number five might not only be the most important way to get through your backlog, but just straight up life advice to get shit done. Don't spend so much time scrolling social media. Now, I know I post a lot. I do, I get it. I do it for like, I don't know, plugs or just posting my thoughts on like opinions that I have on games or shows that I enjoyed. But I honestly only spend like five minutes a day scrolling social media or like when I'm pooping. <laughs> so the less you're on social media, the more time you have for video games or the more time you have to do shit that you've been putting off, period. Social media is indeed a soul-sucking endless void of meaningless affirmations. <laughs> Number six is a trap that I learned to not fall into over the past few years, but I used to fall into that trap every single year. And that is don't fall for the sales, okay? I know Black Friday, it's tempting. The game you've been waiting to play all year is on sale for like $30 or maybe $15, shit. I get it, you just wanna buy maybe five games because the sale's like, ooh, buy five for like $50 and you're like, wow, that's the less than a price of a game or something like that. I get it, don't fall into it, just don't, okay? Because it's gonna make your backlog grow and by the time you get around to one of those games, I promise you it's probably gonna be cheaper or free. It might end up on Game Pass when you're ready to play it, it might be on PS Plus, or it might be just straight up free. Now if you're not playing anything, the game's on sale, and you're gonna actually play it, sure, go for it. Get, get the sale, why not? But if you have other things that you're playing and you haven't gotten through your actual backlog, remember games that you paid for, games that you own, then maybe you don't buy it yet. It'll be on sale again, I promise. Unless it's a fucking Nintendo game jump on that shit. <laughs> Number seven is also something that I started doing recently and that's just not pre-ordering games until the day before it releases. This gives me a chance to read reviews and form my own opinion on if people's opinions match my own preference for video games. And also sometimes the marketing of a video game seems really, really good. And when pre-orders come in, developers may slack off. And then when the final product comes out, it's actually shit. I think it's better to either wait for the game to come out to see your friends' opinions or people who you trust, their opinions or people whose opinions align with yours, and then forming your own decision at that point. Like, there's no point in pre-ordering games otherwise. I usually pre-order my games the day before it comes out because by that point, embargo's lifted and then I can read up on reviews and then see which reviews align with my own gaming preferences. But for the most part, I think it's a bad idea to pre-order games, period. But if you do, do it the day before. And if it's a game like Callista Protocol that their embargoes lift the day it releases, just don't get it because it's probably a bad sign and they're probably doing that for a reason. Now, if you're 100% sold on a game, you're like, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I'm gonna play this shit because I love this series. Like, I don't know, God of War Ragnarok or something or like Elden Ring 2, you know, I'm gonna get that shit no matter what anyone says. Then yeah, sure, go ahead. But just keep in mind that it might not be as good as you want it to. And it's better to spend more time playing games that are good than games that are like mediocre. You know what I mean? Another reason I stopped pre-ordering games is because sometimes really close to release date, uh, the developers will announce that the game is coming to a service like Game Pass. It's mostly Game Pass. I think Outriders was a game that I was gonna pre-order once I saw reviews, but then I saw it was coming to Game Pass and I was like, oh good, and they only announced that a few weeks before the game released. So just give it a rest, like let it sink, see more of the marketing, see some reviews, and then make an informed decision before you pre-order game if you're gonna pre-order it or just don't pre-order it. People are gonna be playing it on Twitch and sharing their opinions 
and you might save some money and time and focus on the games that you actually own. Number eight is gonna sound crazy, but it's an effective way to get through your backlog and that is to cut down on your social life. Yep get rid of your friends. No, just, I know this sounds like a joke, but there's so many people that are like, oh my God, how do you play so many games? Like I can't even get through this game. But then those same people are always out at like a bar or a club or doing some other activity instead of playing video games. And it just makes me think like if video games were so important to you, I think you would spend more time playing video games. It's not like going to a bar or club is an obligation, it's a choice. So maybe you prefer to do those activities than play video games. And in that case, don't put pressure on yourself to get through a backlog because you're getting through the backlog of like, I don't know, the club or lounge or whatever the fuck. It's okay to have a social life, but sometimes having too much of a social life can take away from doing the things you wanna do. And that might not just be video games. It might be books that you wanna read or whatever. Take some time to do things for yourself if that's what you really want. But if you find yourself always out and about, then just acknowledge yourself as a social being who likes to be out and about and prefers to do that over playing video games. That's it. Number nine is gonna sound a bit contradictory to number eight, but it's kind of true. And that's to give yourself a break from video games. Sometimes non-stop gaming or non-stop doing anything can kind of burn you out and you kind of lose the spark and the passion for it. So you need a break to do some other activity in order to feel excited about it again. Because if you're playing through a game and you're playing it over and over again and you're kind of getting tired of playing games period or just that game, then you're actually gonna take away your enjoyment of it by like just pushing through. So it's better to just step away, do something else and then miss the game and come back and play it with full enthusiasm. And you'll get through it a lot quicker. Personally, I always step out for a bike ride if it's nice outside or a walk. That's kind of things that I like to do. Lately, I've been reading books again, which has been nice or just watching like a TV show or something that I really enjoy. Reading manga, like other activities that I enjoy outside of gaming but gaming is my main hobby so i do spend more time doing that but it is helpful to take breaks and i find that i enjoy video games more when i do and most of the time i actually limit my gaming time to the evenings because it's an indoor activity or for like rainy days or something um, and if it's sunny outside, I feel weird being inside playing video games. So I make sure to go outside and enjoy the sun. It makes me feel good. But like you do whatever activity you want, but definitely take breaks. Too much gaming isn't good for your mental health, isn't good for your physical health. Too much of anything isn't good, um, especially a sedentary activity like gaming. So definitely make sure you're taking breaks and taking care of yourself. All right, there's actually 11, but like 10 is like the number to say for videos and thumbnails, all right? I got 11 for you. Okay, number one was just like my strategy, but I'm gonna throw in a bonus 11. So number 10 is actually, don't feel like you need to play every single game. If you don't like a game that you started, just stop. Don't finish it. Don't feel like you gotta push through it, okay? If you paid for it, return it, give it away to somebody, sell it, I don't know, but don't waste your time. I'm not proud of it, but I'm actually the type of person that I will push through a game that I don't like because I paid for it. And that's something that I'm working on. And I actually got better at it this year. Well, last year, 2022, it's 2023 now. Um, with Scorn, I started it and I was like, eh, I'm not really feeling it. And I actually didn't continue it, but it really helped that it was on Game Pass. Had it not been on Game Pass, had I actually played, paid for it, then I probably wouldn't have wanted to let it go and I would have pushed through and played it. I also did the same thing for a few other games, but I am currently playing a game right now that I do not like and I'm going for the platinum for it. And it's a very long and grueling platinum and I'm living regrets of dying light too. So maybe this video is a living contradiction, but I'm doing it with a friend. So it's not like a selfish thing. It's like a communal thing. And it's a way to bond with this person, um, even though I'm not enjoying the game, but like we're in it together. So it's kind of cool. I don't know, but yeah, don't do that. <laughs> But yeah, basically, number 10, don't give in to the FOMO. A lot of people are like, oh my God, everyone's playing this game and like, I need to play it too because it's popular. Don't do that. Know what kind of games you like. Know what kind of games you keep going back to and stick to those. Don't feel like you got to play a game just because everyone else is playing it. And I know it's hard and I'm kind of contradicting myself because I'm always playing the new and hot shit. But like, I actually beat the games, okay? I beat them, I get through them, I get them off my backlog almost immediately, okay? Number 11, my little bonus one is fucking whacked, okay? I'm totally gonna admit this is a whacked recommendation. But here we go. Quit your job, don't have kids, break up with your partner who doesn't have hobbies. All right, I'm just kidding. Don't do those things, please don't do those things. But the truth is, 
if you have those things, like a full-time job, like a partner or children, it takes away time from gaming and there's nothing you can do about that. These are obligations that we have if those are things that we're involved with. And to alleviate this without actually like abandoning your child or like breaking up with your partner or losing your job, just make sure you're taking time for yourself. It's very important to have that me time, whatever that means to you. If it's playing a video game, if it's going out with your friends and like stepping away from the family, if it's taking time off from work, bro, once I get my time off from work again, I'm gonna be taking time off just to play video games. I did it at my old job and I'm gonna do it again. Like take that whole day for yourself to play a video game. Keep a calendar of game release dates so that you know you're gonna play that game and you're gonna take the day off to play it. Or if you have kids, maybe play a game that your kids can play with you. Like I know not every game is kid friendly, but find a kid friendly game that you can enjoy and that you can enjoy with your kids. Or you know, when you send them to bed, you can go ahead and play the, the mature game. <laughs> and I mean, this is life advice, not really like backlog advice, but like don't get into a relationship with somebody that demands 100% of your time. Somebody that doesn't have their own hobbies that they wanna do on their own time. Like you need to step away from whoever you're with. It doesn't have to be that they're a gamer too. They can be interested in whatever, but it's just unhealthy to like spend 100% of your time with anyone, even if it's a family member or a friend or whatever. Um, make sure they have hobbies because then that would just make them boring and you guys probably won't last anyway and they'll never want you to play games. They'll only want you to spend time with them and that's whack, okay? But they don't have to be a gamer, okay? Like, they can have their own hobbies. Whatever that hobby is, it doesn't matter. But as long as they have hobbies so you can play your game and then they could go ahead and do their own hobby. So that's my top 10, actually 11 <laughs> ways to get through your backlog. Let me know what you think. If you have any strategies that I missed, let us know in the comments. I would love to hear. Maybe I'll implement it myself and let you know how it goes for me. Um, TLDR, focus on beating games you own first, especially the physical copies. If you don't like a game, let it go. Give it away, uninstall, whatever. Watch people play a game before you buy it, read reviews or whatever. Keep lists of games you're really interested in to keep track. And then it'll also help you stay organized and prioritize the games that you really really want to get through first and remember truthfully the backlog never ends but you can make it less overwhelming and make progress so that's it yeah let me know what you think of my suggestions let me know your suggestions if there's anything that you heard from this video that you're like oh i'm gonna try that i want to hear about it especially if it works okay and yeah that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you liked it i hope it was helpful more than anything and the most important thing is that you take care of yourselves and each other